All right, so welcome back to episode two of my vibe coding adventures. Today, we're gonna try to vibe code a 3D simulation of 3i Atlas. Now, for those of you who don't know, 3i Atlas is the interstellar alien spacecraft currently on its way to Earth. It recently passed Mars and will reach its closest point to the sun on October 30th, the day the invasion begins. No, but in all seriousness, 3i Atlas is a massive interstellar comet and it's got a lot of scientists scratching their heads. This thing came from outside of our solar system, which is rare enough, but there's also some really weird data around its brightness and trajectory, among other things. So I spent about an hour or so researching it, finding as much data as I can about its movements and trajectory. And after going back and forth with ChatGPT about how to best structure this data to feed the replit agent, which we'll be using today to vibe code, here is what we came up with. Okay, so we have the recommended first prompt from ChatGPT. It starts with a goal, create an interactive 2D or 3D visualization that simulates the hyperbolic trajectory of interstellar comet 3i Atlas using real orbital elements. Then it provides some details like represent the sun at the origin and plot the comet's path as it passes through the solar system. Use heliocentric orbital elements, whatever that means. It provides some details about the distance, I believe, the coordinates, the comet's speed, animate its motion from 2024 to 2026, label the sun, earth, and comet with simple markers, add a short info panel, and it even has the style here, make it clean, minimal, space-themed, and then the output, the final app should run entirely in browser, no external API calls required. And then it even says if the agent stalls or gives you a static image instead of an animation, follow up with this prompt. So let's just go ahead and feed this initial prompt into the replit agent and see what that gives us. All right, so I'm just gonna copy paste that. And there's actually this improve prompt button here, which I think I'm gonna go ahead and click. Let's see what that does. All right, so it pretty much just restructured the prompt in I guess a way that's better understood by the replit agent. Um, all the details are still there, core features, visual references, style guide is similar. It actually changed a bit. And then they actually added some more things about the design here, some fonts, dark space theme. So let's just go ahead and start this up. By the way, you guys probably know me from delivering the weekly AI news or breaking down complex interviews, but I'm also gonna be throwing in some vibe coding videos here and there now. I have zero experience in coding and have only vibe coded maybe a handful of times, but I'm trying to get more hands-on experience with these tools. And I also just wanna see what someone with no experience in coding could actually code with the help of AI. That's basically what these videos will be for. And definitely feel free to drop some feedback or suggestions in the comments. All right, so everything seems to be ready now. Um, I have the option to build the entire app with the agent or start with a design, but it's actually unavailable with this app type. So I guess we're just gonna go ahead and build the entire app with the agent. Let's go ahead and start building. All right, so roughly five minutes of work later, 51 actions taken by the agent, 1400 lines of code added and 92 lines removed, dozens of Instagram reels watched by myself and about $1.16 USD, we are now at our first checkpoint. So we have this so far, just the sun and three lines coming out of it with a large ring around. So now it's asking if we want to continue building. Here are the proposed tasks. Add planetary positions for Jupiter, Saturn, and other major bodies for context. Implement multiple camera presets. Add detailed comet information panel with real astronomical data. Create screenshots, export functionality. Implement trajectory. Okay, so these all look like things we want to add. So let's just go ahead and continue building. I should also mention we do already have this simulator thing here, which when I click play, I believe it tracks, where is that? I believe this is the comet or maybe a planet. I'm not entirely sure what this is yet. Um, we could speed it up to, I think, oh yeah, 365X. So I guess this is a year. Yeah, so 365 days per second. So it's honestly not looking too bad right now. It's very smooth and we'll see once it adds these new details. You can see here, things are being added in real time right now. This is pretty insane. 
we have the red line here, I think representing the trajectory of the comet. Planets are being added left and right, and this is really coming along. All right, so it's now 23 minutes later and apparently it is done. It says all features are complete. But I mean, all I see here is a blue screen. The agent took 48 actions, wrote about a thousand lines of code, and it only cost me about $2.42. But again, it doesn't seem to be working. Let me open it in a new tab. Okay, we get an error here. Polyline is not part of the three namespace. Did you forget to extend? So I have no idea what this means. Let me just screenshot this and send that over to the Replit agent. Let's see what that does. Okay, so I'm just going to add attachment, upload a file, upload that screenshot and just send it off. Okay, it says, I see there's an error with the line rendering. Let me check the logs and fix this issue. Okay. All right, so I think that did the trick. Three minutes later, another dollar and 29 cents, and well, we have the simulation here. I guess if you're ever stuck vibe coding, just take a screenshot of the error and send it off to the agent. Pretty simple, but I'm dying to try this, so let's just dive right in. Okay, so we have our simulation here. As you can see, we've got some orbital data on 3i Atlas. We've got orbital elements. We've got the days per second simulator. We've got three different camera views, heliocentric, which I believe is just with the sun at the center. We've got comet chase, which let's see. Okay, so that's crazy. It puts you right on the comet. It's the comet's camera view. And we've also got earth view. As you can see, this is earth, I believe, this little black dot here. But let's go back to heliocentric for a second and let's just start this simulation at, I guess, 30 days per second. Let's see what that does. Okay, so we're in 2024 now. The planets are moving. Where's the comet though? Can I move the screen? So the comet should be passing, obviously, towards the end of 2025. There it is. That's the comet. Did you guys see that? Okay, so we're gonna run that back, but this time on the comet chase camera view. So. I wish I can zoom in here though. It's a bit far. We've also got real time comet details. I just popped up here. That's pretty crazy. Oh, what's going on? Oh my God, this is insane. It just changed views automatically. So we're passing through. We've passed through. It's now 2026 comet details. Okay, so let me, let's go back. Let's go a little bit slower this time, 10x. And let's try to see if we can read any of these comet details. So current status, we've got distance from sun, velocity, date, days until per perihelion, perihelion? What is perihelion? Let's ask ChatGPT quickly. Okay, so it's just a point in orbit when the object is closest to the sun, I believe. So right now, so right now its distance is eight, AU from the sun. I think that's astronomical units. It is approaching quickly. Here we can see the comet moving into the solar system. The alien spacecraft. It is about to enter the solar system. What date is it? This is now, wait, let's, pa let's pause it for a second. So this is now Monday, October 6th, and it is right outside the solar system. I'm pretty sure that's pretty accurate. It is supposed to pass the closest to the sun on October 30th. So let's see. So the date right now, October 29th, and it is near closest approach. It says 18 days until perihelion, which is closest to the sun. So it might be off by about two weeks. Wait, no. It says right here, date Thursday, October 30th, one day past per perihelion. So yeah, October 29th, it hit closest to the sun and it has that accurately. As you can see, can I zoom out? Well, it's it's a bit weird, the angle here, I have to like hold it, but you can see the comet is closest to the sun 
on October 29th, which is completely accurate. Now, there's also this compare trajectories button that I didn't even know was here. There's the Aumuamua, that other massive space rock, and the Borisov, but I'm not sure. So do I just click this? Compare trajectories? I don't think it's doing anything. So I'm not sure the compare trajectories actually works, but if we go back to the replit agent, maybe we can fix that. And also, I want to make this comet look more alien spacecraft-esque, even though it's most likely a comet, but I want to see it look like a spaceship. So let's go back and add those two things to the replit agent. So number one, the compare trajectories button does not work. Please fix it. And number two, please make the comet look more like an alien spacecraft. So yeah, pretty brain dead prompts, but I mean, we're vibe coding. The whole point is to let the AI think for you. Okay, so I believe it has fixed the button that took about two minutes of work and only 65 cents. So let's open this up in a new tab. Let's just go straight to compare trajectories. And I guess we click compare trajectories. I'm not seeing any other comets, but the thing is we're also not in the year that they would be here. So like, oh, oh my God, look at the comet. It's like a UFO now. That's crazy. But yeah, so like the Aumuamua is like, I'm pretty sure that's how you pronounce it. It's not going to be passing through in 2026 or 2027. So, but there's also compare trajectories. What is that? What do they mean by that? Like, wouldn't it show the line of the trajectory? I'm not sure, but let me just go back. Let me restart that and go to Comet Chase. I want to see that UFO close up. Okay, let's see. We're getting, we're getting a good view of it here. Oh, wait, look at that. It's a UFO. There's a UFO we're passing. Okay, so that was actually pretty cool. Let's do a quick, quick one. So yeah, guys, I'm honestly happy with this. I mean, we've got the real time comet details, the real trajectory of the comet, everything's accurate. We've got orbital elements, current date. Um, the only thing, the compare trajectories doesn't really work. Perhaps if I'm more specific to the agent, it will understand what, what this button is even for. But I like that there's different camera views also, Earth view, um, it's even blue, that's pretty cool. Comet chase and the comet is a UFO. Like, this is awesome. This is so cool. The fact that, like, I haven't even seen a single line of code, not that that would have mattered anyway, and I've created this, this space simulation of 3i Atlas, the alien spacecraft, and for such little cost, like, how much did this even cost in total? I mean, we've got 65 cents here, $1.29 there, $1.16, I think another one was like four bucks. It was probably probably around ten dollars. Probably not even. But yeah, so this was another vibe coding success. Everything I've tried vibe coding so far, I pretty much got a working version that I'm like happy about. So the pace at which vibe coding is advancing is kind of crazy. And we're able to do a lot more now, even if you have no idea how to code, like myself. I'm honestly super happy with this. And by the way, if you guys want to try out this simulation yourself and even potentially make it better, I think I can publish the app. There was a publish button earlier that I saw. Um, I'm not too sure how you can even publish this, but I'm going to look into it if you guys are interested. If it's just like a link or something, I'll just probably add that to the comments later on. Okay, so the publish button is actually right here. It does seem to just be a link. I can go ahead and make it public or private. Publishing your app makes it available for anyone to use. Your friends and users around the world can visit your app through your primary URL. Okay, so it's really just a link. I'll just go ahead and add that in the description then. But anyway, if you guys enjoyed the video and want to see more vibe coding videos just like this, definitely drop a like. Also, feel free to drop suggestions or feedback in the comments. I'm still learning. I'm still a beginner. And I hope you guys can join me on this journey of vibe coding and trying to figure out what's even possible. So again, thanks for watching. Drop a like, subscribe if you're new. And as always, I'll be catching you guys in the next one.